Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how to split a larger text file into smaller multiple text files based on the row size provided by the user with the help of OCI functions. Here we are going to make use of the Python FDK. Any text file we can use and we can split into smaller size files by row size. Here the file we are going to get from the SFTP server and the splitted files will be put back to SFTP server as well. Now let's walk you through the functions code. Before going into the functions code, in our previous video, we had seen how we can split a larger CSV file into smaller CSV files with OCI function wherein we had used pandas module in python. If you have not watched that video, please check out the video, link is in card section. Our function will accept those parameters in the JSON request at the time of invocation. Here the user has to provide the SFTP directory, file name, header required to or false like how we have seen in our previous video, if set to true. Then the header will be copied in all the files. If set to false, then the header will not be copied. Row size, the maximum rows that must be present in each file that has to be mentioned. Here is the functions.py file. This is the exactly same boilerplate code what we get when we write fn init command. So there are a few assignments over here at the beginning of the function, like what we had used in our previous functions, wherein we had splitted the CSV file with the help of pandas module. It's exactly same. So I'm trying to fetch the SFTP directory value, file name, header required value and the row size from the JSON request which the function receives at the time of invocation and I'm passing it to the split file method which is present in file split fn.py file. For any errors raised within this method will be sent back to the user accordingly. The first method in this file is write file to SFTP. This is basically used to push the file into SFTP directory. I will talk about this later. So this function will be called from our functions.py file. The first thing is we have to get the SFTP details like the host, port, username, password. I have made use of configuration parameters in order to store all these values. I have covered in detail video on how to use configuration parameter and how, to, how it works, how the values could be changed at runtime without modification of the code. Please check out the video. I will give the link in card section. The next thing is I will generate the file name that is by appending this first argument is nothing but in our request is sftp directory slash and the file name. So I'm assigning the row count, file count and the row size and the row size will be like 10,000 records or 5,000 whatever the user enters what he or she may need in each of the splitted files that I'm providing it over here. Row count, file count these are the variables you know for use for naming the file and for iteration. Header value value like the false or true will be stored in this header value header row i will use it shortly in my code this variable and file content is a global variable over here each of the rows will be added as an element of this list and it will be used to flush that data at the time of putting that file into sftp directory so this is placeholder in order to generate the response back to the user wherein uh, we are sending this message and the generated file names back to the functions.py file that's it. I'm making use of this SPI SFTP module over here in order to connect to the SFTP server. First and the foremost thing, this function will check whether the supplied file name is present or not. If, if there is no file or if the file is not a file or if it is a directory, then we are raising an exception over here saying file not found. If there is a file, then it will pull the file and it will write into a temporary directory which is provided in oracle cloud functions. As we had discussed in our previous video from oracle cloud infrastructure documentation, here is the page on a temporary directory what is the maximum allowed size what are the maximum number of files what we can put into a temporary directory what is the threshold for the functions all those things you can check in this metrics available in the table when you design the function so here what we are going to do is we are going to open the file which is downloaded to a temporary directory in the buffering mode one is for buffering zero it will be default that is non-buffered so here we are going to iterate line by line i'm going to iterate if, if it is a line uh, then what i will do is it will check whether the header value whether it is true or false in the request if it is true then it will check whether the header row is copied or not previously if it is a none then what it does is first line will be copied as a header row and it will put in the file content so that it will write to a file then it is going to skip any of the commands present over here and it is going to iterate to a next iteration in this for loop in the next loop what it check is whether the header value is true or false now it's true header value is not none so this will be skipped elif will be skipped so next thing is it will increment the count so we are not considering the header row as a row so apart from header row it will count how many rows to enter into a file based on row count so row count will be checked here 
if it increases the threshold of row size which is provided by the user if it reaches if the row count like 10,000 is equal to row size then what it does is it will increment this file count the counter what we had initialized here to zero so it will increment and it will create a file the file naming convention is same like how we had done in our previous video like it will get the file name before csv and it will append the file count value and dot csv next it will call the write to file sftp method which we had written over above so this method will straight away use the put fo method and it will put the contents of this list into the file what it has generated over here next it will append the file name to our response that is split files dot files here in this dictionary it will under files it will append the element in that list next we are resetting the file content and rows count values so that the next file details will be generated and it will be written to a newer file now we'll test these functions and we'll analyze in detail i'm here in the postman client i have consumed this functions invocation url already and i have provided the sample request over here as i told i'm going to make use of this data one.csv file for a testing purpose first i will set this to true i want header value to be copied in all the splitted files let's now refresh the sftp directory before hitting the test button let me hit the test but send button now our function code has executed successfully we are getting the status as success and the message and there were six files generated let's first analyze why there were six files now here in the file we are having 52 rows now since the header value we want to be copied in all the files so one we will minus that is 51 it comes so in the sixth file we should have single line that is the 50 second line and in the rest files we should have 11 rows including header now let's verify so these are the files which got generated by our functions code I have already downloaded those files in my local machine. Let's open one one by one all the files and we'll verify. As I told, we must have 11 records in each file, including column. So first one is a column. Rest we are having 10 rows. In the second file also we are having 11. The first one is a header. It's also same. This is having 11 records or the rows. First one is a column header. Let's open the last file here we must have only one line that is 50 second line yeah this is one and the first line is a header now we'll test this function for header value false now our generated file as per the code the first file will have a header row because it will consider it as part of the rows if header value is set to false this you can change the behavior if you want to eliminate completely the header you can modify the code accordingly now this has executed completely in two seconds so this function executes faster than our previous function that is with the help of pandas pandas is basically is a heavy module which is used for data analysis and cleansing of data so if you are looking for a faster method of generating the csv files or any text file you can go for this approach instead of pandas and if you are having complex requirement wherein you have to group the data clean the data and all you can go for the pandas so let's now refresh this so these are the files which are generated with header value set to false i have already downloaded those files to my local computer let's now verify the sixth file here we are having the two records because in the source file we are having 52 records or the rows if header value is set to false this will be considered as a normal row as per our code so first 50 will go into first five files as our row size is set to 10 so each file will have 10 records of the rows and the last file will have two rows let's check the third file and yeah, this is having 10 rows second file also will have 10 rows and the first file will have a header row and nine records yeah and the first file is having 10 rows out of which first one is a header row so like this we can split a larger text file into multiple smaller text files i have considered the example of csv it could be any text file Please do like this video and subscribe our channel and thank you for joining us in this video.